We've made this film to demonstrate how we carry out the MIPA assay to detect antiplatelet antibodies in patient samples. The assay is used a lot in platelet serology, but we know from our work in making reference materials that assay sensitivity varies a lot between laboratories, even though they apparently use the same technique. The principle of the technique is simple. Platelets have many different molecules on their surface that antibodies can bind to. We are usually trying to demonstrate the presence of certain HPA antibodies, but this is often in the presence of HLA antibodies and possibly other HPA antibodies. In this example, we are showing how to demonstrate anti-HPA1A. Here we have the first part of the assay. HPA type platelets are incubated with serum from the patient which we are investigating. After washing, any unbound antibodies are removed and then we add a mouse monoclonal antibody against glycoprotein 2B3A as this is where the HPA1A antigen is located. The excess monoclonal antibody is removed by more washing and the platelets are lysed. The lysate is then added to a flat well microplate which has been previously coated with goat antimouse IgG. Only the glycoprotein with mouse monoclonal antibody attached will bind to the plate and all other glycoproteins, whether or not they have human antibodies attached, will not bind to the plate. After incubation and more washing, only the target glycoprotein is left. To detect any human IgG bound to this glycoprotein, we add an enzyme conjugated anti-human IgG and incubate. And then finally, after more washing, we add a suitable substrate and measure the resulting colour change due to the bound anti-human IgG conjugate. Before we start the assay, it's necessary to coat some flat well plates with goat anti-mouse IgG diluted in coating buffer. We prepare the plates in bulk and keep them in the fridge for up to two weeks. We also need some platelets to test the samples against. We store aliquots of our panel platelets in liquid nitrogen vapour. These have been collected by apheresis from HPA genotype donors. After thawing at 37 degrees, the platelets need to be washed to remove DMSO and resuspended at the correct concentration. The buffer should be added dropwise and the platelets should be washed three times at this stage. What we are doing today is a screen for antibodies against glycoproteins 2B3A, 1B9, 1A2A and HLA class 1. We actually use two different monoclonals against 2B3A to increase our chance of finding an antibody, but these will be added at a later stage. If we find an antibody reacting with these screening cells, then we would carry out more tests with a larger panel to identify its specificity. To start the assay, we add platelets to the plate, spin them down, discard the storage buffer and resuspend it in TBSBSA buffer. Today we are using just two cells. At all stages involving the washing of intact platelets, it is crucial to ensure that all the buffer is removed whilst retaining as many cells as possible. Today we are using just two cells. One is homozygous for HPA1A and the other is homozygous for HPA1B. The donor platelets are in these wells across the plate. and the controls and patient sera, or plasma, are added down the plate, like this. We have a reagent blank in the first column, then a negative control, followed by various positive controls, depending on the glycoprotein, 
and then the patient samples. In this case, we've called them samples X, Y, and Z. The first incubation of cells and sera is carried out in a water bath at 37 degrees centigrade. After half an hour, the serum and any unbound immunoglobulins are removed by first spinning and then two more washes. It is important that the platelets are fully resuspended at this point and then the various monoclonals are added and the plate incubated for half an hour at 37 degrees in the water bath. While the platelets are incubating, the flat well plate is removed. This is the plate that was previously coated with goat anti-mouse IgG in the preparation stage. Excess anti-mouse is discarded and the plate is washed three times. Then wash buffer is added. All washing stages for the flat well plate can be carried out manually or with the aid of an automated plate washer. Going back to the assay. After half an hour's incubation, the platelets are washed three times and then solubilized by adding solubilization buffer. After careful mixing, the plate is incubated for 15 minutes at room temperature. It is important to ensure that the platelets are mixed well with the solubilization buffer at this stage. After the incubation, the lysate is centrifuged for 15 minutes. While the lysates are spinning, we take the blocked F well plate from the previous step and discard the buffer, leaving the wells empty. When the lysate is finished spinning, you can usually see a deposit of cell stroma in a circle on the bottom of the well. We then carefully remove 100 microliters of the supernatant from this plate and add it to the corresponding wells in the F well plate. The plate is then sealed and incubated for half an hour at 37 degrees centigrade. After half an hour, any unbound material is discarded and the plate is washed six times as before. Then peroxidase labelled anti-human IgG is added to each well. The plate is sealed and incubated at room temperature for an hour. One thing worth mentioning is that we store aliquots of the enzyme conjugated antibody frozen after diluting one to one in glycerol. This really helps achieve stability and prolonged activity. After the one hour incubation the plate is washed six times as before and the buffer is discarded. Finally OPD tablets are dissolved in distilled H2O and hydrogen peroxide is added. The substrate solution is then added to all wells and the plate is incubated for 10 minutes while the colour develops. It's important to carry out this stage in the dark as it keeps the background values low. After the colour has developed sufficiently, dilute sulfuric acid is added to all the wells to stop the reaction and the optical density of each well is read in a plate reader. Here is a reminder of the plate map for this assay. You can see positive reactions with sample X and Z when tested against donor platelet 11 in the glycoprotein 2B3A sections of the plate. And also, sample X reacts in the glycoprotein 1A2A section. Occasionally, the combination of incomplete solubilization of platelets and samples containing strong HLA antibodies results in positive reactions which do not show HPA specificity. Sample Y has been chosen to illustrate this. This sample shows positive reactions with both platelets in the glycoprotein 2B3A and glycoprotein 1B9 sections of the plate, reflecting the pattern of the reactivity in the HLA section. Sample Z also reacts with both cells in the HLA section. However, this pattern of reactivity is not reflected with the other glycoproteins. What we would do next with these samples is to test them against a larger touch panel so that we could identify any platelet antibody with more confidence. The panel would be more extensive but the protocol of the test would be the same. 
So what we hope to have shown you is that the microassay can be carried out in a few hours. Attention to detail is important though, particularly with the formulation of reagents and incubation times and temperatures. Obviously, it's also important to start with a good panel of tight platelets. So we wish you good luck with your experiments and please contact us if you require further information.